Greetings. The Lord be with you. We're doing our devotions. I'm doing it here rather late at night. I did the devotions this morning and had every intent of trying to get it uploaded sooner. But I've been on the phone or chatting with people almost all day long. So before I leave the office here, I wanted to get the devotion shared with you. And maybe you'll get a chance to see it tonight or tomorrow morning. But I wanted to uh, uh, begin, as we have each day, after saying greetings, the Lord be with you. I'd like to invite you to make the sign of the cross with me as we remember and say together, we are under the care of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Someone recently said to me they weren't sure how to make the sign of the cross. And I always think about what Jesus said about love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And so I kind of go from my mind down to my soul, the diaphragm, and from my heart and and love the Lord and, and my strength. And I make the sign of the cross from my head to my diaphragm and then across my chest and come back to my heart. And so we are under the care of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's always such great news, especially in these days. Our devotion today for day 34 of our book of uh, going uh, of discipleship, going in mission, the Christian's vocation to love their neighbor. We're actually in this week uh, talking about how it is that we love our neighbors. And so our verse for this first uh, day of the week is, uh, I know we began maybe yesterday with uh, the reading about the raising of Lazarus, but now on Monday through Friday, we'll have five scriptures to reflect on. And the first is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 34 to 40, a famous passage, and this is only part of the longer passage of the parable of the sheep and the goats, or the king on his throne. It begins that way in verse 34. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. That is just such a fabulous passage of scripture, and I'm so excited that we can share it together today. Um, our, as, as Luther invites us to, uh, to read these scriptures, we make the sign of the cross, and we uh, uh, say a brief introductory prayer, and so we'll just do that. Father, thank you for our time together this day. Uh, whatever this day has held for each of us, Lord, um, it has probably involved connecting with people in some way. Thank you for the lives of people you have brought into our, into our uh, vision this day. And, and Father, that's exactly what we're talking about in this scripture, people. People sometimes we don't see and sometimes we turn our vision from. Lord, what is your word for us this day as we hear the story of the, the sheep and the goats and the parable of the kingdom of God? Uh, open our eyes, open our hearts to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, then Luther invites us in the first question we have to ask, what have I learned about God? Or what is God's message to me? And what does he want me to remember or do? Well, there's a couple of things I, I saw, and I'm sure you've seen more. And I wish we could, we could communicate more about, uh, um, have, have a conversation about what we're all seeing. Perhaps you can post some thoughts uh, after the video has displayed. But we hear about the king who, first of all, he sees people. He sees the hungry. 
the thirsty, the naked, the sick, and those in prison. Sometimes when we're walking down a city street, a person in need, a homeless person, a hungry person, a thirsty person, we'll almost want to avoid eye contact so that we won't have to engage them. There's really a way of treating others as though they're not really there. I've not been in that situation, so I don't know what it would feel like day after day after day to have people intentionally not notice me. What I see in this text is that God notices everyone. That means he notices you as well. And he always will. Whatever your needs are. And some of them aren't so plain as being naked or hungry. But there's not one of us who doesn't have a need. And God notices those needs. And of all these people who are the least of these, Jesus says, the King Jesus says, these are my brothers and sisters. Jesus is not ashamed of his brothers and sisters. He noticed them, he loves them, he claims them, and he invites us that we might inherit the kingdom prepared for us. Along with these, his least of them, brothers and sisters. That's the first thing I noticed about God. And what does he want me to remember? Well, I I wrote down in my, my devotional book, I, I wrote, God identifies with those in need. It is his nature to help them. When he is alive in us, we do what he would do without even thinking about it. We notice someone in need and we help them. Almost without a thought. That's the interesting thing in the parable. The righteous say, well, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or naked or a stranger or sick or in prison? We, we never saw you. No, they just saw people in need. They noticed them and they did what they could. When God is, is that way and when he's alive in us, we just do those things without even noticing that we're doing them. We, we see the ones that God notices. If I were to have a prayer about that, I think I'd want to pray that God would help me have eyes to see people as he sees them. I wonder how I might change my way of looking at a person. Certainly with compassion and with deep love. And that's necessarily approval of everything another person does, but I guess God sees me and he sees others in ways beyond my own vision. He sees what I can become, what in his plan of history he's made for me, he's made me to become. Uh, notice again at the beginning of the text, come you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, prepared for you from the foundation of the world, from the beginnings of time, from before time. God made creation, knew it would fall, uh, dealt with sin by sending his son into the world, and he had a plan to bring you into his family, into a relationship with him that will last forever. What an astounding truth that is. The second thing Luther asks us after instruction is to Think about thanksgiving. From what I have read and, or learned, what is a blessing that I am thankful for? Well, I am God that notice. I am, I am thankful that God notices me. He sees people and he helps them. And the truth is, lest I forget it, I am among the least of these whom he has turned into a brother or sister. What a privilege that is. Confession. Luther asks us to think about what in my life needs to change to come into alignment with what I've read. Well, I kind of said what my prayer would be. For God to help me see 
one more person. I think I do this sometimes. I know I don't do it all the time. God would help me see one more person. Maybe the next person I see with the eyes that he sees. To look at them with his eyes of love. To see their need and then to do what I can do. I, I've always known I can't help everybody. Who are the ones I should help? Well, maybe the people who I notice. The person who's brought into my path and I just see them. And I can't do everything for everyone. But I can do something. Even if it's not to walk past that homeless person or that hungry or naked person and turn my attention or, or turn my vision or turn my head away, but maybe I can just look at them as though they're really there and greet them and share just a word of hope or encouragement. Notice them. I wonder what kind of gift that would be. And then... After turning that into a prayer, that thought, then we end the day as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. I thought I'd share with you something funny I received today, and then we'll, we'll share the Lord's Prayer. Uh, somebody cut out the paper from, from Saturday, and in the paper there's a little highlighted section as they're looking at, at some local helping those in need during the outbreak, and they're talking about what different churches are doing, and and I know our, our blanket makers group has noticed people in the hospitals and nursing homes who are working without per personal protective equipment. And, and so they've switched from making blankets to making masks. Some of these masks are s simple and plain, and some are actually have inserts in them that could make them uh, like a equivalent of a surgical mask. Um, just wonderful things our people are doing. And uh, I'd been asked, interviewed about what we're doing to help out folks. And, and we're doing more than that, but they, they shared that. But the interesting thing I wanted to share was that somehow uh, um, spell check took over or someone's fingers were just used to typing uh, a certain word. So they introduced me as Pastor Robert Quarantine. <laughs> I'm going to frame that. Isn't that wonderful? Pastor Robert Quarantine of Good Hope Lutheran Church in Boardman. Well, uh, enough fun for the night. I'd like to end with us praying together. I love you, by the way, and God loves you too. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Boy, we pray, deliver us from evil, from this illness, from the scourge that is coming to our land. But that's a prayer we can pray often. God bless you, and have a good day. Bye-bye.